Hey, welcome. I've got six games of my ladder climb in wild with my odd demon hunter deck. Six games at three times speed with commentary. Hope you enjoy. Let's get into it. In my first part of the series, I played one game and won against a quest mage. Here I'm in my second game, I'm playing against a rogue. I decided not to keep the sigil runner because it's not in a good outcast position. I'll drag you war blades. I'm not sure I need it. So I just go with the battle fiend because I know I want that for sure. But the cards I end up getting, the war glaives and the baku, end up being a lot clunkier. So that's the way it goes with mulliganing. Sometimes you get worse cards when you try to be picky about what you get. If I'd held onto the coin, I could have put out the albatross or the satyr there, Albat or the warblades. The satyr, no. Wouldn't waste its ability there with a minion able to kill it straight up on the, already on the board. So I go for the warblades. I'm thinking next turn I will hero power, kill the 2 3, and play the albatross or the satyr. And I'm going with the Satyr. I drew the Consume Magic. I was wondering if I should play that, but then I wouldn't be able to play a 3 drop and clear the Silenced Pirate. I'm wondering about the Warglaives of Azanoth. Its interaction with equipping it after you've attacked with uh, the last charge of a previous weapon or any charge. I'm wondering if you can attack multiple times. I didn't, haven't tested it. If anybody knows, I'd love to hear a comment about that. I figure it doesn't work because the Warglaze of Azanoth is not on the board to register the previous attack. So the Warglaves is kind of useful in getting rid of their two biggest minions there. Allow me to attack. Come down to 15, which is pretty good. My hand is not very strong, though. Drying patches doesn't help me. The sabotage surprises me. I was kind of counting on the, the five damage I could get from that to bring the rogue down to 10. I was kind of hoping maybe I'd bring him down to 10, then I'd draw the metamorphosis and finish him off over the course of the next two turns with metamorphosis. Because I'm not seeing how I'm going to control the board with my hand. I'm not seeing how I'm going to get another 10 damage in fast enough if I don't. So here I just kind of play my minions because what else can I do? Hoping I can win the race by going face. I'm hoping the rogue will chicken out and kind of focus on my board instead of trying to win quickly. Rogue could have won easily in two turns if the rogue had focused on going face. Just a couple trades. If he'd just kind of gone half-half, but he didn't know what was in my hand, and that would be a risky play. So I, my draws are not helpful in this situation, and I have to concede. Register my first loss. Here, I'm up against a Demon Hunter. I keep the I-Beam because I feel like that's potentially important tempo. Draw the 1-1. One, one. I don't use it because I figure that'll prompt the Demon Hunter to attack and trade into it with an attack. But that that was just not great thinking there. That just let him develop into the board instead of trying to respond to my board. 
So now I'm just waiting for a good chance to use my I-beam. Still isn't there. I don't like wasting three attack on one health minions. So I go face, even though that means I'm going to take more damage. Finally, a good target for my I-beam, the 4 3. But I actually have a really good play if I Warglaive down the 4 3 and attack with the Warblades to be able to play that, the Happy Ghoul, too. That's a fun interaction between the Warblades and Happy Ghoul. Works out well for me, him attacking into the 7-4. The Warglaives of Azanoth let me wipe his board and get 5 damage in. I've got 6 showing, he's got 2 showing as far as damage on board. But he gains 4 life. So now I'm at 6 and he's at 18. That seems like a big wide gap, although I've got the ability to gain three here, which I know I've got to do, and I've also got the Warblades. I make a mistake there, costing me four attack. Could have attacked with the Warglaives and then equipped the Warblades and... Well, I could not have attacked again, actually. That's not true. So I guess it's not really a misplay because I wouldn't have been able to attack face again. I wouldn't have been able to gain, gain um, health. And I guess that was pretty critical there. It was very critical. I hung on to it by the skin of my teeth. Now I'm up against a mage. Uh, I keep my one drop and my three drop. Here I kind of make a questionable play again, deciding to not go for my one drop. I was thinking to myself, well, I want to make sure I don't draw patches, but also I don't want to just have my two one easily pinged down, but I wasn't thinking about how that might let him develop a 2-3 minion, for instance, which doesn't line up well with my hero power or any of the minions I played, except the Battle Fiend, I suppose, but the Battle Fiend, I don't want to trade it in, I want to try to use it to get damage. Ends up not mattering in that regard. I focus on not letting the Apprentice live and trading in the good value trade that I have. Now I use my attack to kill the 3-2. Two. two attack for one mana to be able to kill the 3-2s is just great. So he's got an 8-8. Eight, eight. I'm curious how he's going to play it here. Is he going to be defensive or is he going to try to burst me down? I think he tries to put me in a position where I'm going to stop attacking face to be able to deal with the 9-9. Nine nine. But I figure the best way to control the situation is by attacking face here because now unless he can close the game out and he's got a frost bolt and a ping I mean he's got the ping but does he have the frost bolt? I doubt it. So I decide to Go for go for the pressure, make him trade into me, and the Warglaive is able to clean up the the mana giant. Now I realize it's an ice block, so I play the Priestess of Fury to bring him down to precisely one. I guess precisely one is maybe not essential when you've got a two attack health hero power. Delaying his quest one turn was important. And getting all those minions down. You'll see having all that health in those minions helps me live because it makes a chance of that arcane missiles hitting my face less likely. And I survive at one health by the skin of my teeth. Again, two games in a row at one health, I think, winning. Will be three in a row. I'm up against a mage. What kind of mage? Quest mage? Are there other types of mages? I mean, I know there's secret mage out there. 
I know there's Highlander Mage. I don't know how often Highlander Mage is being played. This guy is a Mage aficionado with a thousand wins. Mage is the only class I have a thousand wins with so far. And I got that a long time ago. I mean, I mean years ago, like three, four, five years. When I first got into the game, I pretty much exclusively played mage, except to like finish quests and stuff like that. I was free to play for a long time and only had cards to really play mage. And then I started putting money into the game so I could be able to play more of the game, more classes, more decks. And that's been fun, honestly. Basically, it turned out to be a spell mage, and that lined up with me figuring that out and being able to play Lothab with minions on board to pretty much close the game. So I just had a win streak, pushed me up all the way to Silver 7. Third mage in a row, another quest mage. Um, I'm wondering... Do I hold my coin for turn 5 play, or do I play the Satyr and coin out in attack? I said to hold the coin for a 5 mana play. Because otherwise, I would have an uncertain turn 4. I actually drew a turn 4 play, but it wasn't guaranteed. And it turns out working well, because I want to deny the Stargazer Luna. So the mage is three out of four out of six with the quest. I want to get rid of the apprentice. That'll make finishing the quest too easy. So I decided to attack and use the gladebound adept to kill the apprentice. Don't like wasting two damage there, but it's essential. Now I can use another gladebound adept to kill the flame waker, and I get seven damage in, which is sweet. I've got two 7 attack minions. Uh, he decides to Arcane Intellect instead of ping and run the 2-2 two -two into my 7-3. Turns it into an easy win for me. He was, the mage was gambling there. I'm up to Silver 2, another win streak game. Playing a Druid, I figure it's probably the Kael'thas Jade Druid deck that Broke wild, sort of, when Kael'thas first dropped. My next turn, turn three, I don't have an obvious turn three. Really playing the happy goal for three mana would have been better, but I also think to myself that maybe getting two damage in is more valuable than putting a three drop down that just gets removed. But really, I do want to bait out the removal because the less removal he has, the more chance I have to get something on the board later and also slow down some plays for him. Like maybe he won't be able to play the, the three mana, gain an armor for every card in your hand. Draw a card, gain an armor for each card in your hand. Card, I forget the name of it right now. play the albatross. I'm kind of hoping the albatross could could gum up the draw. But I should have probably played a 5 minus ability there like the Glaivebound, like the Warglaze of Azanoth. I play the Priestess of Fury. I'm feeling good there. Except I forget about that clear the four mana turn all minions into two twos. Still though, I've got six got six board attack there, plus five. It's down to fourteen. I'm doing overall pretty well. If I had played the happy ghoul, I would have gotten three potentially five more five more damage in. Potentially, between the 3 3 attacking next turn and then being turned into a tree and attacking the turn after that. Hard to say. I mean, he might have changed courses and had a different play. 
I've got to put all the damage face. I'm going to go face with that. I'm not going to kill a little piddly 1-1 one, one with a 4 damage battle cry. He's at 17. I've got, I'm showing 7 plus 2, that's 9. But he just gained 5. He's up to 22. He's got 10 in taunts in the way. I can silence one of them. I can clear one of them awkwardly with a 4 attack and a 2-1 run in. Put the happy ghoul here, finally. Do play it for free, but... Could have done more with it earlier, potentially. It's not going to connect. It's just going to get one attack in, probably, into these 1-5s. I go face with the metamorphosis because... Uh, I'm not going to win the board, probably. I don't have any minions to win the board with. Okay, he's got Kael'thas now. He's got a ton of mana. I have almost nothing in the tank. Just one card. That's not going to do much. So, yep. The game's pretty much over. I'm not going to quit immediately because... The Lotheb kind of will shut him down for a turn, but I should I should equip the Warglaves anyways. But anyways, I've I've essentially got nothing here. I don't really see a real way to win. Just kind of going to wait to see what my next draw is, and watch the crazy mana shenanigans card draw. Adding to deck, Jade, Creation, etc. So, long game, but I get closed out there. Got to concede. A pretty good run there. Went 5-2 and two overall. Not bad. I'll continue that in my next update. Meanwhile, I'm curious. What do you think is more interesting? Do you like the 3 times speed with commentary approach that I'm taking to be able to show you all of the games that I'm playing, the wins, the misplays, or would you prefer normal speed, all of the games, or would you prefer normal speed, just a few highlight games? I'm curious. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks.